Robert just um, Merch is not in the, the squad What's the issue? Yeah, he just he just pulled up a little bit sore in his groin. He's sort of been carrying it for for a few weeks, um, but then after the game, it just uh, he didn't react very well to it. To be fair to him, he's been really good with it. He's been looking after it. So in between games, he's been making sure you know he gets on top of it. But yeah, on this occasion, a little bit too much. So was giving him a rest, making sure and get getting it better. Yeah, it's one of those. It's a little bit of um, suck and see. You know, see how he how he recovers, but I, th- I don't think it'll be. Yeah, I don't think it'll be too long. I think it will just be, you know, this week, potentially next. But yeah, it won't, it's not a long injury. It's just something he's he's, he's sort of aggravated more than, you know, anything too severe. Are there any other potential changes within the seventeen for this week? Um, well, it's a hard when you go over there and win, and win like in that manner. Do you know what I mean? The the, the team's pretty much picks itself nearly. Um, Obviously, Hugo Hugo picked up a bit of a head knock, so he'll, he's obviously absent. Um, but no, that we're, we're quite settled, which is a good sign. Just a word on that result, because it, it's such a, a remarkable scoreline, if, if nothing else. But what, what sort of boost and what sort of confidence does that give the group for the rest of the season? Oh, look, it's, it's obviously great for us. You know, we got quite a good record at Carlons, to be fair. Um, you know we've, we've we've done all right in the, in the past and and yeah I think the performance was was obviously great for his confidence moving forward because they've been a, they've been one of the form teams I said last week that you know they're sitting top of the tree they've they knocked off Saints the week before they've had some pretty big scalps so to go over there and actually get results yeah really good for us but really good for his confidence something that we're not getting carried away with we understand that you know we're only one game but. But we've been building over the last few weeks, so if we can continue building, we'll, we'll be all, all the better for it. What were your thoughts on the semi-final draw and the, the venue that we've discovered this week as well? Oh, I'm just happy to be in the draw. You know, it, it could be anywhere. You could, you know, could play in Scotland, Ireland, Wales, wherever you wanted for me. Um, it, it, it's always going to be a difficult proposition. When you get to a semi-final, there's no easy proposition. So, you know, no matter who you're drawn against... It's a neutral venue, so yeah. Look, we're we're just we're just happy to be in the draw. And we're feeling confident about where we're at, and if we keep, like I say, we keep building, then it should be a really good game against Warrington because they're they're playing extremely well at this moment in time as well. So it all bodes well for a really good game. As are, <coughs> excuse me, as are you at the moment. Leeds rather inconsistent this year. What's your what's your take on the Rhinos? Yeah, probably you've probably just summed it up. I think they're really talented. If you look at the actual roster. They've got really good players. They've got individuals within, you know, their outside backs in the forwards that can turn the game on ahead in an instant. And they've probably shown that in games this year, where you know they've had some really good results, really good sort of performances. Then others are probably in a little bit below pass. But we're expecting the, you know, the best lead side, especially at going to Edinburgh. It's always a difficult place to go. You know, they've got the fans behind them on the rest back, praying for that penalty. <laughs> to be given in their favour so you know we're expecting the best lead side this week and the history has shown games between these two sides can be quite quite close as well can't they They're quite nerve janglers yeah we've, we've had some go for us and some against us um, they've always been really tight affairs obviously a local derby isn't it so they're always they're always uh, close fought contests and yeah over the you know, over recent history it's, they've been really good games to watch so for the neutral it'll be a really good game for to watch and I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's a slider, you know, landslide victory for us, and we win by 50-60. But I think history dictates it's not going to be that. It's going to be a, a tough game and one we're ready for. I remember some tasty affairs. You, you'll have played in Bentley for Huddersfield against Leeds. I remember Luke O'Donnell ripping Ryan Bailey's shirt and, and all that sort of thing. Were you involved in that? Uh, it was the, it were him and Stuart Field, and they were protecting me and Kev Brown. So I was like. <laughs> A bit of a made man that day, yeah. We, when we had uh, Stu and, and Luke Gordon all playing together, you kind of felt like you were, I could do anything to anyone. I could poke anyone in the eye and get away with it. That would generally want my role. My role to uh, instigate the fight and then quickly move away when it when it got to fisticuffs. Okay, you made a career doing that foul <laughs> about it. Um, Adam Milner will make his 300th Super League appearance this week as well, which is a, a fantastic milestone for him. As a, as a fellow nine... What sort of accolade could you play, play, pay him ahead of Friday? Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a warrior. Do you know, he's, I think that's probably the way I'd sum him up. He's, the way that he plays the game is really, for, for a smaller middle, should we say, cause he's not always been a nine. He's 
obviously sharing the role with McShane, sometimes he's played back row and loose and he's been that sort of mobile ball playing loose, but a smaller middle, should I say, but he's always wore his heart on his sleeve. He's been really physical. He generally leads the line, the line speed of the of whatever team he's playing. He's been doing that for us brilliantly this year. So yeah, the biggest tackle I give him is just how tough he's played. He's, um, I think he's only 31, but he's probably he's probably got the body of a 37 year old, just the way that he plays. <laughs> he's, um, you know, he's been playing since he was 17 and he's, he's always been the first one, yeah, to lead the line, to do all the tough stuff, to do all the sort of unseen things really, you know, the unselfish acts that <clears throat> probably the, the layman doesn't see, but his teammates do, you know, he does a lot of the kick pressure, the kick escort, the tying in, the third man, all the, all the sort of fine details that, like I say, you probably don't see, but we do see and we really appreciate what he brings to us. Joe, how's it feel to be back in the side and having a decent run of games under your belt now? Yeah, it's been feeling really good, to be fair. Um, obviously, had a bit of a, um, a bad start to start the, to, to the season and um, to get back, obviously, back into the squad and... Um, to put in a few performances and get some uh, minutes behind my belt, it's just feeling really good to be back. Do you feel like you are where you, you, you'd like to be or do you feel like there's a bit, bit more still to come, maybe in, in terms of fitness or timing or whatever? Yeah, there's, there's always a bit more to come, um, getting back into it all and um, like getting used to where obviously your feet are in contact, wrestling and fitness, like your match fitness, it takes a few weeks to come. So um, yeah, I'm I've, I've probably still a little bit behind, but um, like I say, I, f I feel like I'm getting there and just keep playing and playing and just keep uh, playing my best rugby that I can. Um, hopefully that'll uh, just, just carry on. And um, like I said, it's, it, it's just that I just need to um, <clears throat> just, just, just keep playing the games. And what do you feel that result at the weekend in the, the Challenge Cup has, has done to the group and, and how can it help you in Super League, do you think? Yeah, obviously it's given us a massive boost, you know, to uh, go over there and uh, like Robbo said before, we have a, we have a good record against them over there and um, obviously they're at top of the league, they had a good win against Saints the week before and we knew we were up against it. Um, but, but for us to come out on top and to put that scoreline on them was, uh, was, was great for the group and obviously give us a lot of confidence going into this week. But... Um, I feel that obviously we can't get complacent with that. Um, we've got Leeds who are, they've had a week off and they'll be um, identifying us as a team and where where, where they can sort of try and um, get us, you know. So we have to be on our game again and obviously that game's gone now against Catalan and we move on to Leeds. How do you look back on your two months at Leeds? It was quite a bizarre time, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I only went in training for, I think, a day, maybe two days and then Covid happened, so... Yeah, I didn't really didn't really meet everyone, so yeah, it, it was strange times, and like I say, I, I know some of the players from when I when I were at England, and obviously being up at Leeds as well, uh, just for them couple of days. So, uh, but yeah, it was just strange. So I, I can't really count that I, I was at Leeds to be fair. <laughs> Do you not really? Yeah. Do you effectively not? Do you, have you still got any of the kit or anything like that? No. Well, I just got a, uh, a shirt and, and some shorts and. And that's it because they were going to sort me out for uh, for the two months coming up, and then obviously after the second day, we everyone every, everything got closed down. So, yeah, it's like it never happened. <laughs> and I think you were one of the or were you the first Leeds player to to contract COVID? Um, well, at the time we was going to Catalan, um, and they were umming and ahhing, but a couple of us had like colds and stuff and they just said the doctor just stood us down straight away they stood us a few like a few lads down at the time when it were all kicking off so they just said because if you get stuck over there then you're isolating in france i said well that's not a bad thing <laughs> yeah. so yeah we uh yeah we just got stood down really and then the uh the team never traveled anywhere no have you ever wondered what might have happened had that not been the case and you had managed to make your debut and, and see out those two months? <laughs> yeah, like, you're always intrigued in that, but like I say, it, it's happened, like, I always think stuff's happened for a reason and then end up going back to Wigan and stuff and playing every game since then when we come back. So it, it was strange how it all all sort of happened because at the start of the year, I, um, I was sort of 18, 19th man at Wigan and then COVID happened, come back and I played every game, so... He's, he's just strange, you know. And you were a Leeds fan, weren't you, growing up? Yeah, I used to have Barry McDermott on the back of my top. So, 
Yeah, so so when when Watto gave me the number ten shirt, Huddersfield, Barry texted me straight away saying that do you want the Makawaka, his big forearm guard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he said he'll uh, bring it out for me. Just dust it off. There'll be some blood on that. Fielding's blood, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart Fielding on that. Yeah. Um, what, did, what did you call it again? The, the, the Makawaka, he calls it, yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that he gave it a name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a huge part of his career, wasn't it? Yeah. It, um, what was it? You're throwing me now. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, that allegiance with Leeds, has that sort of gone by the wayside now? Do you ever still look out for their results? Uh, not really, no. Because um, obviously we've been at Huddersfield, we want to do well here and... Um, it was just when I was growing up because you had like Kev, Sinfield and Barry um, round Saddleworth so we always used to see them and you speak to them so that's sort of why I sort of sided to Leeds a bit when I was a young kid but um, coming up now whoever, te like, whoever team I'm with that's that's who I'm like literally supporting all the time and you just want to do well you know you're with them all the time so yeah it's, 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 it's just one of them you sort of come away from it from your sort of little fa fan, fan club if you know what I mean. Yeah, what did you do with that shirt with McDermott on the back? I've still got it. Have you? Yeah, I've still got it. The uh, the full yellow. Do you know when they used to have the old yellow kit with a little bit of blue on? Remember it, that one? Oh. Not not a Leeds fan, mate. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> not when I was a kid, anyway. Robert could probably still get in that shirt. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it with a full yellow kit. I always remember that. You should bring it in. You should bring it in. Just <laughs> lastly, what Joe? What's your take on the Rhinos on their sort of form at the moment? Yeah, like Robbo said before, they're um, they're up and down at the moment. You know, they've they've had some good results at the start, and then they've um, sort of gone off the boil a little bit. But we always feel against Huddersfield as well, being um, a local derby, that they always turn up, and especially being at Edinley, the fans are going to be there, and um, they're going to be getting on the back of Leeds and stuff. So we always feel that it's always a good game, a good intense game. So that, like like I said before, they've they've had the week off, they've had to like they've re re regrouped and stuff. So they're going to be bringing a lot of energy and enthusiasm, and we have to match that. Brilliant! All the best. No that problem. was a good chat, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. That's sure. me laugh. I'll pass you over to the other James. Yeah, some good stuff in there. Jedi's cover most of it. Just a couple for you, Luke, please. Um, and you, you probably touched on this earlier, but up until last week, you've done well against the sides towards the bottom and struggled to get the, the same results against those top sides. Was it almost a break, breakthrough win for us field this year? Uh, yeah, I don't know about breakthrough win. Obviously, it's his biggest scalp. And you know that when it comes to the business end of the season, those are the teams that are going to be there, thereabouts in the playoffs. So those are the ones that, if, if you actually do want to achieve anything, are the ones you've got to knock off. But, you know, I don't feel, really feel like there's many easy games in Super League regarding where anyone's in the league, you know, whether whether they're situated at the bottom or the top at the moment. So we'll we'll, we'll take every win as it comes and we'll be we'll be grateful for every win and but it is obviously a little bit nicer knowing that you've gone to the top of the league away in France with all the sort of logistical problems and that sometimes that brings. Um and gone there and did a really professional job and I thought it was one of the best performances of the year so far. So yeah, we'll, it's always nice to knock off the the, the top end of the table teams. Yeah, you've scored a lot of points in recent recent weeks. What do you put that down to? I think it's a little bit of combination. You know, we had a little bit of we had a little bit of sort of instability. Normally, when your spine plays, the same spine players, you know, when they're playing week in week out, sort of get a bit of a combination. But at the start of the season, it's just about really, you know, you're playing in not not great conditions. You're still finding your flow. It's just about kicking the ball in the, in the corner. And just basically grinding wins out. Whereas as the season develops and you start developing as a side, you you start building them com combinations, those connections. Um, and I just think having a settled spine really sort of helped that. And when they seem to be finding a bit of a flow, find out how, how each other play, what makes them tick, what they like, what they don't like. So I just think, yeah, a little bit of continuity in, in the spine's been really helpful. He's starting to see the best of Jake Connor as well. Now, now he's getting back to full fitness. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, he's got, got a bit of a rough deal, really, with Jake. When he first came back, I don't think people realised the severity of the injury they had. He literally didn't run for sort of like seven months. And when you listen, you know, to, for all Jake's qualities, he probably his fitness is something that he actually has to really work hard on. But credit to him, you know, he, he's worked extremely hard this off-season. He's put the metres in, he's put the hard work in, he's, 
he's really sort of knuckled down and focused on that aspect of his of his of his um, sort of his development really, and it's it's paying dividends for us this year. And like I say, I think he's sort of building a real good combination with the other people that he's got in that, that spine. So yeah, it's credit to Jake where he's come from and coming away, coming like I say, coming back from that injury. I think everyone expects to see the best Jake Connor and I think Leroy Kudrow went through something very similar and he said it took him a good 12 to 18 months to actually fee- find his feet again. So, yeah, I think there were a little bit of that, but also then, you know, the hard work he's done in pre-season is obviously playing dividends now. Yeah, we, we spoke, just finally, we spoke about the away run at the start of the year. Now there's only two games left before a bunch at home. Are you close to laying a strong platform for the rest of the year? Yeah, look, we had a, we had a little, I think we were for two out of eleven games or two out of the first nine games were were at home and all the others were away from home. So we knew we sort of had a little bit of a challenge at the beginning of the year. But rather than looking at it doom and gloom, we kind of looked at it with a a glass a glass half full really. And we thought that if we if we can actually get some some wins under his belts in the in the early rounds, and it, it puts us in a really good position, knowing we're going into like we're going to have a, a fair few home games going into the sort of spring summer months. So. We feel like we're putting ourselves in a in half decent position, and you know, hopefully, we can knock off a few results in these next couple of games. That you know, when the, when the home games do come around, we're we're in a good spot. Oh, good stuff, brilliant. Thank you. All the best for tomorrow.